What's going on, guys? Jamie Macon. I am the husband. And today, something a little bit different. Hmm? What are we doing? A how-to tutorial. A what? A how-to tutorial. That's a how-to tutorial for those of you out there didn't understand that. <laughs> um, we're actually doing a tutorial on how to make a welcome board planner box. So you can have a welcome board with pretty little flowers on the bottom. So let's just get over to making it and we can show you there. Okay, so here we are just cutting everything down to size. And you know what? Hang on, pause this for one second. I don't know why I'm saying to pause because I'm the one doing the pausing. <laughs> um, so our board here is four feet tall by 12 inches wide. And we went four feet tall because our design, our layout is just over three feet. So what that did was gave us room on the bottom to build our planter box. Um, our planter box is actually nine inches tall because our potted plant that we're gonna put in there, the pot is nine inches tall. So <laughs> it kind of hides it down in there. Um, Pro tip, save that pot for next year. <laughs> same pot every year, same <laughs> size. <laughs> um, so the board's 12 inches wide. So our front board's 12 inches wide by nine inches tall. Our side boards are nine and a half inches deep. So it gives you a little bit of room to get the pot in and out of there um, by nine inches tall. And you know what? We'll put together a little Google Doc with all the dimensions and a quick overview with all these instructions. That way you guys can download, print it out. That was a lot of mathing. Have it with you. <laughs> and it's a little easier to understand when you have a dimensions or diagram right in front of you. So. And you can take that little sheet of paper right to Lowe's and Home Depot with you and say, I need boards this size. Yeah, they will cut them all for you. I mean, we're cutting them here just because we'd make a bunch of these. We have them all at the house. But right at Home Depot or Lowe's or whatever, they'll cut all these boards right to size for you. So, all right, we'll get back over to the video. Okay, again, just cutting out the length and size and everything. Oh, and squaring up the ends to make sure everything's square and straight before you start to put everything together. Um, so, after we get everything squared and cut, um, the next thing would be sanding, which my lovely wife was the super sander. I'm allowed to do that. <laughs> You can't lose fingers sanding. That's right. I mean, you could, but you really got to try. That's talent. Yeah. It's a lot easier to sand these all now before you get them assembled. That way you can get in the nooks and crannies while it's nice and flat. It just makes your life a lot easier. <laughs> a little close up. <laughs> <laughs> um, here we're drilling the holes for the angle brackets. Um, you don't have to drill the holes, but I like to pre-drill everything. That way it doesn't crack. And especially if you're using solid pine boards, it keeps any cracking or anything going on. It just makes your life a little easier. Plus, it's easier to assemble when you got everything laid out. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, so these are the corner brackets that go down into the base where your potted plant will go. And it helps keep everything square and also keeps everything a little sturdier. Um, just makes life much easier. And you're trying to hold everything and nail and glue everything together. So um, we are using three quarter inch plywood. So we take these brackets and we hold them three quarter inches back from the edge. That way when you put the new board on, everything lines up. Um, you know what? Let's pause this again. One second here. Okay. So here's a pro tip for you. If you're just going to get one of these boards, go to Home Depot or Lowe's or whatever and get yourself a piece of pine. It's easier. They'll cut it all up, do it, everything for you right there. But if you're going to make a couple of these, um, it's cheaper and easier to get a sheet of sanded three quarter inch plywood. And in fact, if you're gonna make a couple of these, you make a couple to sell, get yours for free. What we do. Um, <laughs> so the best thing is with the plywood, easier to cut down to size, everything matches up. And also it doesn't bow. So when we first started doing these, we used pine boards and eventually leaning against the side of the house, you'd get like a, a curve or a bow to the pine. It would actually flex. Mm -hmm. Whereas the plywood doesn't flex, doesn't bend and holds it pretty well. And in fact, we did a test with one of our boards. We put it out in the fall of last year, left it out through the rain in the fall, the snow in the winter, spring again, had no problems with it swelling or cracking. The only thing, a piece of ice fell off the roof and kind of chipped the corner of it, but they yeah. That's an act of that's, Yeah. <laughs> we can't defend against that. Um, so pine, or uh, excuse me, plywood is great to use for the exterior. We just use exterior paint and get everything sealed up. It's so. just extra expensive if you're not going to sell off the, yeah. the extras. Yep. So we'll switch back over to the video. All right. So we're just going through here and assembling the boxes. Uh, again, it's easier to build the U-shape on the exterior 
and then put your brackets on your main board and kind of slide it over top and get everything to line up. <clears throat> Excuse me. Put the One, Tupperware on the lid instead of the lid on the Tupperware. Put the lid on... Great example. <laughs> <laughs> now we did use glue as well as all the screws. Plus you'll see we use finish nails. We sell these. So we would like to make sure they're bulletproof. They're not gonna come apart. You'd probably be okay for yours if you just wanna use the angle brackets and a couple finish nails to hold everything in there. But while we're doing it, we just use the glue. Glued, screwed, and stapled, and it's not going anywhere. <laughs> um, you see, we just go through and do the finish nails here, front and back. Um, also with the finish nails, it helps to line everything up and it keeps everything straight as the glue is drying. Um, just see me. <laughs> If the camera stays still, you'll see me just kind of hitting the edges here to make sure everything's straight and square. The camera girl got a little too close to the table. <laughs> a jiggle camera person needs a little work. <laughs> All right, so just going through, staple on the back side and everything. And a little touch up, she's done. Well, the building part of it's done. Now it's time to make it pretty. That's. Also, uh, pro tip, <laughs> go through and fill your nails, especially if you're using paint. You can go through with any kind of uh, little spackle, spackle them in so you don't see them. If you're using wood, you can use wood color, or stain, you can use wood colored filler. <clears throat> so, little exterior paint. Yeah. Get everything painted up. Um, and, you know. Be sure to watch where you put your hands when your painting partner's got a brush. So, a couple coats of uh, exterior paint, whatever color you like, whatever color you want, and we'll work with your design. Mm -hmm. And then um, we always put wax, finishing wax, on um, painted surfaces. It gives you a smoother surface to work with, and it makes sure that the stencil isn't going to extra stick, and it's just good. Anytime you use wood, we use wax yeah with our stencils even if you're using a cricket if you're using making your own with a cricket mm -hmm. same thing it'll keep it from peeling up the paint too from sticking too hard and we have that gigantic bottle uh, jar of paste for these boards if you because we do multiples of them we sell the smaller tin which will be perfect for if you just want to do one for yourself you don't need that big huge thing you're never yeah. going to use it we make a bunch of them at once, so we just get the bigger. Yeah, we've so. been doing this two years, and we've only gotten a quarter of the way through that big job. <laughs> the big monster so. turn. <laughs> Back to the video. Okay, so I wanted a fancy pattern on the back. So I picked up the country plaid and laid it out all nice and straight. This one is actually, it's a repeating pattern, so it was actually really easy to line up, which was kind of shocking. <laughs> And then, waxed again um, between coats of paste and putting down the next stencil. Yep, laying down our letters and getting them all straight. And then this blue looks great with the gray and the white. It came out really cool. Yeah, it stands off nice. Yep. And it's pretty. And put a little bow on the end. Quick, simple little bow. Yeah. And then you're all set. You got yourself a nice little finished. Welcome board. Well, once it all dried, we actually did go back and sand some of it off to give it a little more of a distressed kind of a situation. Kind of aged it a little bit. Yeah, it looked really cool because you could see a little bit of the wood coming through the plaid and it gave us some real deep texture and, and dimension. A little bit of interest. All right, so there you go. Um, be sure to check out the Google Doc that has got more specific dimensions and steps of how to and which order to do things in. That way you can go back and check them a couple yeah. times. And I'm also going to add in some different design choices um, because this one was only four foot, but oh. we've made a six foot one too. It was yeah. huge and it was beautiful. And That's so, still outside our door right now, actually. Yeah, I, I won't sell that. Yeah, one. it was a huge um, one. <laughs> but I'll put the the links to the transfers and then the corresponding size of the board that you will need. Right. That way you have all the information so you can weigh out which size you want, which steps you need to do. We plan everything out makes your life so much easier. Yeah. So, awesome. Um, you know what? If you guys are interested in hanging out with us, want to see some more of the wood signs we do and the mosaics and all the different chocolate ideas that we have and everything, Hit the subscribe. Come back, hang out with us. We usually have a pretty good time. Mm -hmm. Lots of crazy ideas. Awesome. Thanks for hanging out with us this time, guys. We'll talk to you next time.